primal chaos. <laughs> All right, this one has piqued my interest. I, listen, I got into Metallica in the 90s during, like when the Black Album came out, at the time I was way into like Guns N' Roses and Skid Row and things like that. And Metallica was kind of par for the course. And I always considered Metallica to be kind of like a, a gateway band, right? A lot of times when you're hitting that age of like 14 or 15, you'll, you'll want to kick out and rebel against the world some way. And for whatever reason, the second that happens, someone hands you a Metallica album and that changes your life. And what tends to happen is as people evolve, a lot of them will move on and, and discover like new avenues of metal and things like that and find niches for themselves. But I feel like a lot of people sort of have that sort of genesis within Metallica because you always, no matter what generation it is, you always see like 14 or 15 year old kids <laughs> with trying to grow beards with, with like straggly hair that's not quite long enough wearing Metallica shirts. And you go, I was there once. That was me. <laughs> um, but that's what I love about them. They've always been there. They're like the stalwarts who are there to introduce you to the genre. And then, you know, whether you stick around or whether you move on, you know, they, they've always got a legion of fans, right? I'm, I'm really keen to jump in. I feel like based on what we've seen from, you know, the resurgence of, of, of you know, their popularity through Stranger Things, they'll be reverting back, hopefully, to something a little bit more old school. I'm kind of wondering if they're going to lean into that or if they're going to stay true to their present incarnation of the way that they write and things. Um, are they going to give us a taste of the old and a little bit of the new? We'll find out. Um, I'm going to jump right in before I do. I just want to say this video is brought to you today by me. I haven't got a sponsor today. I've decided to back myself and here's my merch site. So if you like what you see, I love designing stuff. All of this stuff is designed by me. Um, I got hoodies, t-shirts, you know, band style shirts, shirts for the ladies. I got some, some dumb um, <laughs> raccoon leggings. And I've even designed a couple of pairs of shoes and things like that that are all available down here and stuff. So um, if you want to support the channel, that's absolutely the best way to do it. Um, but anyway, let's dive right in. Metallica Lux Eterna. Here we go. Oh, okay. Love that downstroke, man. <laughs> it's an interesting mix, real drum heavy. It sounds it sounds classic Metallica, like old school. That's ah, a bit bigger now, yeah. That's a big note for James. I like it. Okay, okay. Before they move into the next part, I just want to stop it so I don't miss anything. It's interesting, right? This, this to me, um, is kind of, and correct me if I'm wrong, because like I said, I'm not, I, I always had a soft spot for Metallica, but I, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of their work, right? But this to me sounds more like, I don't know, was it, was it Load sort of era when, when they cut their hair? They, they kind of had this m m moment, I'll say that again, kind of had this moment where they sort of transitioned from like thrashy sort of stuff into more of a gearhead rockabilly punk sort of attitude. And that drum beat is definitely that. Um, and, and the riffing and everything like that, it, it feels like you'd switch in gears on the highway in a roadster, right? Um, and that's interesting in and of itself. Like, I, I don't know how this differs from sort of like anything that's more recent from Metallica. Um, but yeah, like I'm, I'm hearing definitely like classic vibes, but somehow there's a, there's a modern attitude to it. So they haven't gone completely retro. They're giving us a little bit of both. They've got a foot in each camp. But yeah, super interesting. I'm going to jump back a little bit. Love James' voice, man. Uh, 
<laughs> Gotta have a solo, right? Come on, man. <laughs> so what is this, the second, second verse or third verse or whatever? What I loved about that passage, right, is there's a point, and I guess these guys have been around long enough to sort of avoid this sort of pitfall, but there's a point where musicians that have been around for a while they get to the point where they feel like they might be losing relevancy and then they'll try to adopt elements of you know modern concepts and whereas a normal band you know like someone who's more current in the metal scene who's sort of more in involved in like the metalcore or deathcore sort of style that would be the moment for a massive like um breakdown right and so rather than Metallica sort of falling down the rabbit hole of like, what's everyone doing? We need to be as aggressive as what's currently out there and do what, what it is that everyone else is doing. They, there's the concept there of a breakdown, um, but it's, it's 100% authentic Metallica. It's, you know, we've heard it a million times before in their old albums. They're not, what I'm getting at, it's a roundabout way of saying, I'm not hearing a lot of modern influence on this. This is just pure Metallica doing what they do. There's no... Um, there's no like broken ego kind of shallowness that would push them into going, we've got to come up with something new and relevant, right? They're just giving the fans what they appreciate and what they love and they're doing what they do best. And I really admire that because you often hear other acts adopting things from, from the modern landscape and there's no reason why they shouldn't, right? But if you're trying to maintain a classic feel of what you've always been like, you can really derail that quickly by trying to seem like, hey, you know, it just reminds me of like that scene with uh, Steve Buscemi where he's infiltrating the high school and he's wearing like, you know, he's like, hello, my fellow uh, yeah, kids or whatever. And he's wearing a t-shirt that says music band in the ACDC font, you know. Um, it's like the these guys have the confidence to continue to... Um, just do what they do well, you know, without it being colored or tainted by anything other than sort of modern production techniques and things making it sound better overall. Gotta love that. I'm gonna jump back a little bit because solo, man. I love that they've taken the time to let the song breathe in the middle before the next verse. So cool. done yes yeah i get it i 100 get it so there's it's it's interesting it's it's got a classic metallica flavor and it's got that punchy attitude that we all love it's that gearhead sort of pace that just makes you want to speed through traffic um but they've they've modernized it through production and through concepts in the video clip um and things like that rather than than sacrificing the authenticity of the sound 
And that's really cool to see. I, I, I get it. I get it. This is the kind of thing people are going, this isn't a cash in. This is some prime classic Metallica energy that I can relate to rather than just have to sit here and hate. And that's, I mean, that's so cool. Um, about the video production, I love the fact, it, it kind of reminds me of um, Architects uh, when we were young in that it's just a simple dolly track around the band. Um, they're just panning around in a cool way. The band's performing to camera or doing what they do. And they've, they've very creatively, whoever the production designer was or the director of the video, has come up with a way of making a million dollar clip that probably didn't cost all that much money. Um, I mean, when, you, when you're putting things together for a band like Metallica, everything costs money. But this isn't out of reach of a, an up and coming young band who doesn't have the world's biggest budget if they're creative enough. Because all you need is a couple of projector screens. They've got a laser or, or an array of lasers above the band. They're just smoking the place up. And then they're shooting... On that dolly track, they're shooting through some sort of medium, like whether it's glass or corrugated plastic or something that gives it that distortion. Um, and only every once in a while. But like, and then they probably just said cut, and then they rearranged everything, and then they did all these effects where they just put the the lasers behind the guys and did like cool silhouette things, you know. Um, and and I, I love that sort of attitude of. You don't need to make a hundred million dollar cinematic experience, particularly for a song like this. You want something that's punchy in your face, punk attitude, rock and roll. And, um, but just, you know, it looks like a million dollar clip in that it's, it's colorful and it's very stylized in its color. It's got lots of energy and lots of texture. The guys are performing really well and all that extra energy is provided by the visuals being all skewed and distorted and stuff like that. Um, so that's, that's really cool. I think a lot of young up and coming video producers, people who make music videos for bands and stuff should study this because you could learn a lot from this. When my band did a, a, one of our music videos, um, the guy who came and shot it for us did, did me a huge favor and he brought with him a, a whole bunch of different pieces of glass and, and, a, and, and like a handheld floodlight and we were shooting in daylight, but what he would do is put the glass in front of the camera and shine a light at an angle so it caught it and put like you know lens flares and stuff but the glass distorted the visuals and you'd put it halfway across the frame but it's out of focus and blurry because it's up close um and so you get these weird skewed cracked kind of things but it's all in camera you don't have to spend heaps of time on visual effects i ended up replicating those effects in in post when i was editing it anyway just to add more of it in shots that didn't have it but that's what i'm saying you can be really innovative um, from a grassroots level. And I feel like this video clip has a lot of that energy. Um, so yeah, that, that was super impressive for someone who's like made a couple of music videos in the past. Um, it's yeah, I can see what they're doing and <laughs> they did a really good job. I love this effect of it looking like it's, it's raining lasers. No idea how they did that. It's really cool though. But yeah, look, this is a punchy, aggressive punk attitude, gearhead rockabilly, performance and I, I 100% support it. <laughs> Not that anyone cares, but I'm like, you know, I really dug it. Yeah. Um, and I get it. I'm also going to be in that tribe of people saying you should check out the new Metallica album and you should. Anyway, if you feel like I've brightened your day at all, um, feel free to support the channel. Just check out my merch store, primalchaos.com, primal with a Y. Um, and, you know, like, share, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Um, really appreciate you sticking around this long, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of Metallica fans. You know, where does this for you, like if this was not current and it was somewhere else in their catalog, what album would this track be on? Because I'm kind of curious to see where it sits in amongst the, the whole transitional attitudes you hear from Metallica from all the way from the first album all the way through to current. Um, because like I said, I'm not, I'm not a huge Metallica historian, but I know plenty of people are. So let me know, where does this fit for you? Awesome. Thanks again, guys. Stay primal. I'll catch you on the next one.